Westbrook diving into the end zone. Now that is the element of surprise. Christmas from Irving, Texas. And if you love football, your next treat is the most compelling matchup of this holiday weekend. A new chapter in a great NFC East rivalry as Bill Parcells and the Dallas Cowboys get ready to take on Andy Reid and his Philadelphia Eagles in this NBC Christmas Day special. Al Michaels with John Madden, Andrew Kramer. Welcome to Irving, Texas. These teams met on October 8th. A lot of water has gone under the bridge since then. Philly won that game 38 to 24. The Giants were the hot team in the division at that time, but the Giants have lost six of seven. And so right now, these two teams battle for, in effect, supremacy of the NFC East. Dallas can clinch the division title, their first since 1998, and guarantee a home playoff game with a win today. Philly can clinch a playoff spot with a win and put themselves in great position to win the NFC East and to host a home playoff game. So a lot is at stake in this one this afternoon. And John, of all the crazy things, until Donovan McNabb got hurt, a lot of fans who follow the game fairly closely didn't even know if Jeff Garcia was still playing in the National Football League. Well, not only is he playing, but here he is one game away from the playoffs. Yeah, and you have to remember the Jeff Garcia that played for the San Francisco 49ers, went to three Pro Bowls, and Jeff Garcia is a system quarterback, and that system is a West Coast offense, and that's what he has here in Philadelphia. He has, he has good coaching. He has the right system for him. He has the right play. Players, a very good offensive line and he's the type of guy that can run a team he's very effective and very efficient he goes against the Cowboys two weeks ago we were talking about them as possibly being the best team in the conference then they lose to New Orleans they rebound with a win last week against Atlanta but that's a defense that's now given up 70 points nine touchdown passes in the last two games so what do the Cowboys have to do to beat Philadelphia today well you know the first thing they have to do is cover the fullback in the flat because those two games you were talking about fullbacks and fullbacks never Never scored touchdowns anymore in this league have scored four touchdowns against them. Then the next thing is the big plays in the passing game. They have to eliminate those. They have too many against their defense. Offensively, I know they're going to be able to run, but I think it's going to be about pass protection, control in the line of scrimmage, and let Tony Romo have a big day. Ready to go. It's the game of the week in the NFL. You've got Tony Romo and the Dallas Cowboys, Brian Westbrook. And the Philadelphia Eagles in this NBC Christmas Day special. NBC Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. On this 50 degree late Monday afternoon, Philadelphia against Dallas from Texas Stadium. And we'll check in with Andrea Kramer. Merry Christmas to you, Andrea. And to you guys as well. Well, the news came out this week that Terrell Owens has a torn tendon in his right ring finger. He told me he'll have surgery on it after the season. He said it's hard to grab with it, and it's very painful when he makes a catch. Now, last night, Owens visited with some of his former teammates at the Eagles Hotel. As for facing them today, he told me, if I can catch a touchdown at the end of the game and ruin their season, it would be sweet. He said, I can just see the headlines now. T.O. spoils Eagles season again. Yeah, that's a good way to put it because he spoiled their season last year when he was suspended in midseason. But this year as a Cowboy, he has 11 touchdown catches and he will go to work right away because Dallas will get the ball. Miles Austin, number 14, Abram Elam, number 37, back to receive the kick. David Akers moving forward, and here we go from Irving, Texas. The kick fielded two yards in the end zone by Miles Austin. He rolled down it there, and Tony Romo and company will go to work from the 20-yard line. Let's take a look at that Dallas offense. Tony Romo, Eastern Illinois. Julius Jones, Notre Dame. Oliver Hoyt, NC State. Terrell Owens, Tennessee Chattanooga. Terry Glenn, The Ohio State University. Jason Witten, Tennessee. Flowville Adams, Michigan State. Kyle Kozar, Arizona State. Andre Girard, Colorado. Marco Rivera, Penn State. Mark Colombo, Boston College. 
It's a Cowboy offense that's averaging better than 27 points per game. And in no game this season have the Cowboys scored fewer than 17. Creighton, number 84, is their third wide out. He sets up on the left. Romo backpedaling and then throws a screen to Jones and Jones close to a first down and they'll mark him across the 30 yard line and move the change a 10 yard gain Mike Patterson makes the tackle first down at the 30. You know I think anytime you have a, a young quarterback like a Tony Romo you want to get started get him started with something that he can complete and this is a perfect pass you know you get him first down they're kind of half play and run they're kind of half play and pass and then you just throw this the screen pass out there. That was a good block by the left guard Kyle Kozar. Now on the ground Jones part of a two headed running monster the other guy being Marion Barber gain of five. Let's take a look at the Philly D. Darren Howard Kansas State Mike Patterson University of Southern California Dolan Walker University of Tennessee Trent Cole University of Cincinnati Dahani Jones the University of Michigan. Jeremiah Trotter, Stephen F. Austin State University. Omar Gaither, University of Tennessee. Lito Shepard, University of Florida. Sean Considine, Iowa. Brian Dawkins, Clemson. Sheldon Brown, University of South Carolina. Gaither, a rookie who worked his way into the starting lineup a couple of weeks ago. Here's Barber in the game now. They use him normally on third down short yardage and in situations where they keep him in the block. Going deep down the left sideline intended for Terry Glenn was Romo and that's incomplete covered by Sheldon Brown Romo in his fourth season didn't throw a pass in any of the first three but Bill Parcells saw enough of him to know that sooner or later someday and that day became the day in Carolina when in late October after they had lost to the Giants and Romo had started the second half Bill cast his lot with Romo and it wasn't a one shot deal as you look at Drew Bledsoe Parcells saying that day when I asked him if he would make an in-game switch in the Carolina game, he said Romo only comes out if he's in a hearse. Right, and Tony Romo's the type of guy, if he plays for you, he's confident. If he plays against you, he's cocky. Third down and five. And that pass is caught at the 46-yard line by Glenn, having a great year as he approaches 1,000 yards on the season, which would give them 2,000-yard receivers, the other being Owens. 16 yard gain in a first down in Eagle territory. But Tony Romo knew when you play the Philadelphia Eagles that you're going to get pressure. And here he gets the pressure. He's in shotgun, pretty good protection. He just hangs in there and throws that ball out there to the right side to Terry Glenn. And you can see he has tight and man coverage. It was interesting. They put Terry Glenn on the left side to play before and threw to him, away from Terrell Owens, put him on the right side on that last play and threw to him. At the 48, Julius Jones is the running back on first and ten. The Cowboys have three wide receivers, and that kind of spreads that Eagle defense out a little. And creates more room through the middle for Julius Jones, taking it to the 40-yard line for a gain of seven. The Cowboys third in the league in points, 27.6. In passing yards, they are fourth. And the running game has been good enough. I mean Jones is averaging 4.1 per carry. Barber is averaging 5.2 per carry. Right. And it's a good mixture with Jones and Barber. You know Jones doing the most of the first down work. Barber the third down the short yard at the goal line and inside the 20. Jones again his brother Thomas will be going to the playoffs with the Chicago Bears and he has stopped just inside the 40 yard line setting up a third and two. You know what I was going to say earlier I'm, I'm glad this game is between the Eagles and the Cowboys. You know it's not the last time was about Terrell Owens I'm Terrell Owens is coming back you know you know what are the Eagles going to do and what are the Cowboys going to do and you know what is Terrell Owens going to do to them and this time it's about you know two teams playing for the division title and kind of you know what football should really be about and he's reduced to a sideshow. Thankfully took a a long enough period of time third down and three they spread it out nobody in the backfield and knocked down it's a good play by Sheldon Brown the Eagle cornerback in his fifth year drafted in the second round in 2 Brown and Lito Shepard coming up together through the years and he makes the play here. You know it's interesting how they they've just been using Terrell Owens so far as a decoy 
You just watch Lito Shepard. He's just back there and he's just reading. He's just reading the quarterback and the receiver. And then when his eyes point that way, he starts to move that way. And the ball, when the ball comes out, he just jumps it. Matt McBriar leading the league with a 48 3 average, but right now from the 40 yard line, he'll try to pooch this one. Hits it with some backspin, putting the nose of the ball down. Fair caught by Reno Mahe at the 11 yard line. And we'll take a look at the Philadelphia offense for the first time when we come back on this Christmas Day from Irving, Texas. Get those discounted today. <laughs> Make a heck of a deal on a Christmas tree, can't you? <laughs> yeah. That guy's done for the day. Oh, yeah. He doesn't even look tired. He's full of life. No. Nope. From the 11, Philadelphia, Garcia rolling. He's been very effective outside the pocket, but the secondary does its job, and he's forced out of bounds. Garcia, three Pro Bowls with San Francisco. Then he went to Cleveland. That didn't work out. Then he went to Detroit, got hurt. That didn't work out. Then he went home, living now in Southern California. In the offseason, Interest was expressed only by Philadelphia to back up McNabb and a little bit of interest by the Houston Texans. He wasn't ready to retire. He knew Marty Morninwick, who'd worked with him in San Francisco as the offensive coordinator. Andy Reid said, come on in. I want you as my backup to McNabb. And sure enough, he got the start when McNabb got hurt. Here's Westbrook tackled at the 11 for no game. Let's take a look at the Philadelphia offense. Jeff Garcia, San Jose State University. Brian Westbrook, Villanova University. Thomas DePay, the University of Minnesota. Dante Stallworth, Sacramento, California, Grant High School. Reggie Brown, Carrollton High School. L.J. Smith, Rutgers University. William Thomas, Florida State. Todd Herman, Saginaw Valley State. Jamal Jackson, Delaware State. Sean Andrews, the big kid, Arkansas. John Runyon, Michigan. You saw Thomas to pay the fullback introduce himself. John talking about the fullback the last two weeks. John Carney with New Orleans. Justin Griffith with Atlanta had field days. Now Garcia throws and completes a third and long out to Greg Lewis, number 83 for Philadelphia's initial first down. You know, this is what Jeff Garcia does so well, Al, in the pocket. He, he feels the pressure. In fact, he's getting pressure from both outsides, but not pressure in the middle. So he steps up but keeps looking upfield all the time, buys the time, then finds the open guy. This is Jeff Garcia right here at his best. And that ball as he's running and moving up is always ready to come out of there. First and 10 at the 23 yard line. And Dallas will learn if you're going to get pressure from the outside, you better get a push inside on him. Westbrook following the Tepay block and coming up to make the tackle from the corner is Anthony Henry as we take a look at the Dallas defense. Marcus Spears, Louisiana State. Jason Ferguson, Georgia. Chris Canty, Virginia. Al Singleton, Temple. Brady James, LSU. Aiken Adele, Purdue. Demarcus Ware, Troy. Terrence Newman, Kansas State. Roy Williams, Oklahoma. Patrick Watkins. Florida State. Anthony Henry, South Florida. Ware will be going to the Pro Bowl, second year, drafted in the first round last year out of Troy. And in pass protection, he's the guy they have to get blocked. And then on second down and eight, carrying across the 30 to the 32 yard line is Brian Westbrook. Westbrook out of Villanova. It's Andy Reid. Knew all about Westbrook because Villanova in Philadelphia. In fact, Westbrook uh, grew up very close to where the training complex was, and Reed was able to bring him in, work him out before the draft. And he has now developed into a guy, well, he's maybe the most underappreciated guy in the league, should be going to the Pro Bowl, but isn't. Yeah, right, and, and he's a heck of a back. You know, and he's had that size thing all the time. You know, you're not big enough to, you know, be an every down back. You're not big enough to come And he said, I am. He said, this isn't a big game anymore. It's a speed game. It's stuff like this, getting to the perimeter. Great patience exhibited there. Around the corner he goes. And then a forward burst behind a Sean Andrews block to pick up. A first down. That's a 16 yard gain. You know, and this is this is the thing I think that you know that Brian Westbrook was talking about is is you have to be able to get, you know, have speed to get to the perimeter, then have a little patience once you get there to let your blocking develop, and then you have to have a burst. And he showed all three of those things on that play. I really like him. Yeah, I mean he's not only you know a good player and he's you know you know good in the run, good in the pass, but but he's a good guy. He's a fun guy. He does a lot of what Marshall Falk did a few years ago. 
And that pass is incomplete. Looking for a flag was Dante Stallworth. And he doesn't get one. Anthony Henry, a guy who figures to be picked on, and that's because he's been picked on a lot in the last couple of weeks with the coverage on the play. Right, and that's when, you know, Jeff Garcia said that last night. I think they have a lot of respect for Terrence Newman, who plays a corner on the other side. And it's not that they don't respect Anthony Henry, but but he's a guy that has been beaten. And he looks like to me, just watching him on film, that he's not playing with an awful lot of confidence right now. And Garcia knows a lot about him because they played together in Cleveland two years ago. Now the backup to Westbrook is Carell Buckhalter. And he will take the ball across the 50 to the 49 yard line on his first carry. A guy who's come back from three knee surgeries, so he just stayed with it. And back comes Carell, and he plays uh, probably about a third of the time with Westbrook handling. Most of the action right and sometimes they they have both of them in there and, they, and and they've done that already in fact I think they're doing it right now it's it's called their pony where they have Westbrook and Buck Alder. usually Buck Alder stays in the backfield and Westbrook becomes a receiver on third and seven and that pass is caught at the 42 yard line by the tight end L.J. Smith who had flexed out. They had Smith flexed out as the tight end and they had Westbrook in effect the running back lined up in a tight end position on the left side first down. Yeah and that's that's the thing that Andy Reid does so well you know mixes his plays up but also changes his personnel around. I mean he'll go from you know two wide receivers to three to four. He'll put his tight end like that L.J. Smith. He'll split him out. He'll put him in a slot. He'll put him as a normal tight end and they're difficult to cover but the first thing you have to do is find them. Now they come up in an eye with to pay the fullback. Westbrook the tailback following him and that time bursting in to make the play was number ninety six Marcus Spears who was in the Bill Parcells doghouse or I guess it's more like a kennel a couple of weeks ago but seems to be working his way out of it and slow in getting up is L.J. Smith. So an injury timeout with 545 to go in the first quarter. No score. The weeks away the NHL back on NBC the game of the week returning Saturday January 13th regional action including the Pittsburgh Penguins and that means Sidney Crosby taking on the Philadelphia Flyers Jan 13th the NHL on NBC an appropriate shot right there second down and seven L.J. Smith came off the field he's out at least for one play and that pass is caught and that was Dante Stallworth just getting position inside of Anthony Henry and that will be a first down of the 27 yard line actually a little short of the first down they're going to mark it at the 28. Yeah, you watch Anthony Henry he has inside position here and Stallworth still gets inside him because he goes underneath him. I mean he goes up to him and he moves like he's going to the outside and then right underneath. So even if a guy has position on you is he if he's off you you can still be. I think with Anthony Henry if he wants that position you have to get up within that five yards so you can get a bump on him. Third down and one from just inside the 28 yard line and the handoff goes to Carell Buckhalter and Buckhalter is to the 25 yard line. So this opening drive for the Philadelphia Eagles began at the 10 yard line and has now gotten down to the Dallas 25. You know someone told me once that, that, that defenses are really affected by getting first downs against them that they don't know you haven't scored. You know, I mean the score is still zero to zero but. You talk about demoralizing the defense just play efficiently the way the Eagles have offensively here and get first downs and they will think that things are happening to them that really aren't as bad as they think. And this is the 13th play of this drive as Garcia throws and is caught for a touchdown by Matt Schobel. The number two tight end L.J. Smith came out. Schobel came in. It's a 25 yard touchdown and a 90 yard drive. For the Philadelphia Eagles. And isn't Jeff Garcia something? We, you know, we talked about him and how efficient he is, but he's also a fiery guy. And here now, Matt Schobel is in there because LJ Smith is hurt. He just runs right down the middle of that defense. He gets past the linebacker and in front of the safety. Jeff Garcia, see how quickly when he sees it, boom, that ball is right up there and right out of there. 
But Schobel's first touchdown of the season officially it's an 89 yard drive. It started at the 11. Acres for the point after. Four minutes to go in the quarter. 7 0 Eagles. Hearing from the players, kids, all day long on this Christmas day in North Texas. Started out a little cloudy, but bright, sunshiny afternoon. Right now it's uh, about 4:30 local time. It's seven to nothing, Eagles. Acres kick, fielded at the four-yard line. Miles Austin has done a nice job on special teams for the Cowboys, and then he coughs it up, and the Eagles look like they've come up with the ball at the 41-yard line. And officially they have at the 41 yard line Quentin Michael who is the special teams maven for the Philadelphia Eagles the guy who would be according to John Harbaugh their special teams coach their number one guy to force a fumble just did one right there and Roderick Hood recovers it. You know you said that Miles Austin coughed it up and he looks like he really just does cough it up. I mean the ball just starts to move in his right arm then he tries to get control see so gets hit right there then he tries to get control of it can't get control of it and it just flies right out of there. But uh, this is a totally different Eagle team than the one that we saw against the Indianapolis Colts just about what was that three or four weeks ago. Well they were five and six after that game then they won three in a row trying to make it four trying to in effect move to the top spot in the NFC East. So after a 13 play drive that Dallas defense has to go back on the field and here is Westbrook plugging forward for a gain of five to the 35 in the first meeting turnovers killed Dallas five of them leading to 17 points in fact Dallas had a chance at the end they were down by seven they had moved the ball inside the Philadelphia five. Bledsoe through an interception which Lito Shepard ran back 102 yards for a touchdown and that was that 38 24 was the final. I mean the Eagles came in here in this first quarter I mean they're going after the Cowboys they're not going to sit back in their heels and wait and see what's going to happen they're making things happen second and five and this is Thomas to pay we had talked about Mike Carney and Justin Griffiths the fullbacks the last two weeks and that's to pay update now on LJ Smith Andrea what do you know. Well, we found out that L.J. Smith hurt his foot and his ankle. They've taken him into the locker room for x-rays of just his foot. Now, obviously, we just saw his replacement, Matt Schobel, score his first touchdown of the season, but you could see more three wide receiver sets with L.J. out. Right, and more of Schobel, who came over from Cincinnati, where he'd scored nine touchdowns in four years as a Bengal, and his brother Aaron, the defensive end for Buffalo, named the Pro Bowl last week. Third down and four, Garcia. Puts it down and throws and is picked off by Anthony Henry. So Anthony Henry, a guy they will be picking on, picks one off and runs it back to the 30-yard line of Philadelphia. And that's not something that Jeff Garcia does a lot of, and that's a play the Cowboys needed. You know, sometimes a quarterback has too much time. I think on this one, Jeff Garcia had too much time, and then he gets the adjustments. If he would have hit Stallworth now, it would have been okay. But now he waits and he waits and when he finally gets rid of it Anthony Henry is right there. See he waits and waits and now he throws and it's too late. Anthony Henry was beaten earlier on that crossing pattern. But, but by the time he throws out here Anthony Henry makes up that difference. Garcia had only thrown one interception in 167 passes prior to that one. And now Jones will take the ball to the 30 for a gain of two second down and eight. Right. And for the Cowboys that was a wake up call that they needed. I mean the, the Eagles were just kind of having their way with them and they were moving the ball on offense and in the special teams they get the they get the turnover and then they get good field position. The, the Cowboy defense had to do something. Anthony Henry did it. <laughs> you talk about getting your confidence back with a play like that. Yeah. And I think you know, I mean, and it was just Jeff Garcia holding the ball about a split second too long. Second and eight. Out in the flat, that is Anthony Fasano, the rookie tight end, second round draft choice out of Notre Dame. They'll spot it just short of the first down. It'll be third and inches. Yeah, this is the area they're getting. They're getting close to the area where they bring Marion Barber in. Look at Tony Romo there reading the play. See, he has all the 
all the plays on his wristband so they just give him a number and then he just looks at that number and then reads the play in the huddle. This is where Marion Barber is really good. The closer you get to the goal line the more effective he is. And they put a fullback in there as well Oliver Hoyt provide more leverage to the right side with Witten going there but Barber despite all of that is taken down by Brian Dawkins and Mike Patterson Patterson the defensive tackle and Dawkins in his 11th season playing just phenomenally over the last month right because he's getting turnovers he's making things happen uh, Brian Dawkins is the the heart and soul not only of this Eagle defense but of this entire Eagle team so now it is fourth down a short two and Parcells for the moment is going to have the offense line up. Will they snap it or just try to draw Philadelphia offside. Well if they snap it it has to be a pass play. I mean this is this this is not a run situation. They just do get the play off and Romo is going to improvise and hit Creighton to the six yard line. So a near sack and what would have been turning the ball over on downs turns into an improvisational pass over the middle to Creighton and a first and goal. What a play by Tony Romo because you know this is the Philadelphia Eagles. This is Jim Johnson defense. Fourth down in this area you are going to get a blitz. So he knows the blitz come. Here comes a free guy. He dodges him steps up throws the ball on the run a perfect throw to Patrick Creighton. Jim Clay Thomas put the pressure on but Romo is able to get the pass away so they go for it on fourth down. And when we start the second quarter, it will be first and goal. End of one, seven to nothing, Philadelphia. Back to Texas after these messages. Steve Kerr ready to start on this Christmas Day. Al Michaels, John Madden, Andrea Kramer, Irving, Texas. The Dallas Cowboys trying to capitalize on an interception after Philadelphia had an 89-yard drive to make it seven to nothing. And now after a fourth down gamble and conversion. First down at the seven yard line. 32 touchdowns from inside the red zone for the Dallas Cowboys. From the seven on first and goal. Romo, buying time, throws, caught just outside the goal line by Fasano. So Romo looking right, looking right, and then goes over the middle, checking off. And it'll be second down and goal from inside the one. You know, it's interesting. Tony Romo was trying to get the ball to the fullback, and that's a play that has been killing them lately. Well, I said, see, he's looking out there, the fullback right now, and the Eagles cover it perfectly, so he has to come back inside. So he went to one and two on the right side. Nothing there. He comes back to three. Lusaka Polite was the fullback. Now it's Hoy. Will Barber be able to rush for his 14th rushing touchdown? I don't think season? so. And Barber, no signal yet, stopped short. Quentin Michael making the tackle. I mean, you know, you know, once you get down in this area, you're going to get a heavy dose of Marion Barber. Look at this 28 touches, 14 touchdowns inside the 10. So here it is, third down. I mean, I think I think this is the ideal play action pass situation. They send Hoyt in motion but they're going to give it to Barber and Barber is going to get stacked up and stop short. That's why I thought it was a great play action pass because they're just they're just jammed in there. They know that they're going to hand it to Barber They're 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 waiting for Barber and then they're just playing everything getting the penetration inside. I mean that you know that if you just look. Look how committed they are and packed inside that Eagle defense. If you just fake it, you're going to have something outside. Everything is in there waiting for Marion Barber. Now you get to the fourth down. I still think that this isn't a bad play action pass down. Well, they completed the fourth and two to keep this drive alive. Now they need to convert a fourth and goal to tie the game. They toss it back to Barber and what a stand by the Philadelphia defense and that's Quentin Michael who's a special teams guy who's been in on the last three tackles because Michael Lewis is hurt. So Quentin Michael seeing more action out of the safety spot and boy has he come up big on this series. Quentin Michael is their special teams maven. He's already forced the fumble. He'd only made 12 tackles all season 
coming in. Doesn't play all that much defensively, but John, he just made the last three tackles, including this one. You're right, and you see what happened is they bring Jason Witten over there. He blocks inside Oliver Hoyt, the fullback. Looked like he was supposed to get him. No one blocks Quentin Michael, and he makes a big, big tackle. Now the Eagles starting from the four. Off play action. Garcia deep over the middle, and Stallworth is wide open. And the ex New Orleans Saint is to the 39 yard line. He's tackled there by Henry and right off the bat, a gain of 35. You know, how about a gutsy call? I mean, you usually get backed up like that, and you think, let's let's run the ball, let's just get out of here. Not Andy Reid, not the Philadelphia Eagles, not Jeff Garcia. They got a cover two, he gets by the corner. Now, once you get by a corner and a cover two, then you're working on the safety. Jeff Garcia staying in the pocket looking downfield all the time and hits hits Dante Stallworth perfectly LJ Smith back in the game the tight end lined up on the right side Garcia normally a lot of short passing but he will take his shots as he did there we think back as Buckalter carries the ball when he made his first start against Indianapolis I don't think he threw any pass that night John 20 yards downfield but now all of a sudden every once in a while and Philadelphia is a team that can beat you with a deep one right and and it just gets back to Jeff Garcia the way he played when the San Francisco 49ers when he was a pro a pro bowl quarterback and a playoff quarterback and one thing he has to like here I think this group right up here in front the offensive line is one of the best offensive lines in football both in pass protection and in running. And they've been healthy all year. Andrews goes to the Pro Bowl, the right guard. This is Buckhalter and Carell with a flag down. And we can tell you that Mike Carey is the referee because it's our first flag of the game. So we haven't had a chance to mention Mike's name to this point, one of the very best in the league. And that's always nice, isn't it, when yeah. you don't mention a referee's name until the second quarter? Maybe that's why he's one of the best in the league. That's right. <laughs> no, no, because Mike Carey is one of those referees that always has control of the game. There is no foul for a legal shift. Both backs got set before the snap. <laughs> <Take him down. laughs> so we finally talk about Mike, and then he said there's no foul. Jeff Garcia is his four starts, including the loss to Indianapolis and the three straight wins, those eight touchdowns, one pick coming in, but he's thrown one here. But is rating the highest in the NFL over that four week span. You know what I like about him is, is he's a gutsy guy, you know, and he's had to fight for everything all his life. And he goes out of high school, doesn't get a scholarship, goes to junior college, plays for his dad, goes to San Jose State, doesn't get drafted, plays in Canada, comes back, you know, as a free agent with the 49th. I mean, everything that Jeff Garcia has had to do in sporting life has been tough. And this is a free play because Dallas was offside, and the pass is caught over the middle by Reggie Brown. So they can decline the penalty and take the first down at the Dallas 41 yard line. You know, one of the things that, you know, one of the areas. Outside that defense, number 94, is declined. Play results first down. And when you talk about the Eagles, I mean, you kind of tend to talk about the quarterback and the running backs. And these receivers, I think, are better than people give them credit for. You know, Dante Stallworth and, and Reggie Brown, and then they bring in Hank Basket. And they, I mean, that's a pretty good core of receivers. And then you get Buck Alder and Westbrook in the backfield, two at the same time. They have a lot of weapons that they can move around. Westbrook. And those weapons are at the disposal of a coach who loves to pass more than any coach in the league. In fact, in the history of the NFL, guys who've coached 100 games or more, on a percentage basis, Andy Reid has passed more than any other coach in history, 59%. And look at him. You wouldn't believe that, would you? I mean, no. a guy that passes more than anyone else shouldn't look like Andy Reid. Right. When Andy Reid's an old <laughs> offensive lineman, you got to be running the ball more than anyone. But... You know, he knows the thing. You know, you have to score a lot of points, and the way to score a lot of points in this league is to throw the ball. Eagles will take a timeout with four ticks under 10 minutes to the half. Seven to nothing, Philadelphia. When you're playing next to a group of guys, a group of guys who have been used to winning, who know how to win, it, it creates a real positive environment, and I think that has just helped me to find football to be fun again. Well put. 
very true. Garcia and his numbers here after the timeout, second and six at the 38 yard line. Buckhalter is the tailback. Off the play fake. Garcia trying to buy time. Throws back to Buckhalter, and he'll pick up a first down to the 24 yard line. And John, I think to back to Garcia, the fans in Philadelphia pretty much wanted A.J. Feely to take the place of McNair when he got hurt. I think it was it was because of what Feely had done a few years ago. Very few people wanted Garcia, but Andy Reid never wavered. He told us, he said, Garcia, I had promised him he's the guy. It just it reminds me, I think Marv Levy was the first guy to say it. He says, when a coach starts letting the fans make decisions for him, pretty soon the coach is sitting with them. Right, and you know, and Andy Reid did the right thing. I mean, Jeff Garcia is the type of guy that you want, and that's why he brought him in. You know, that if you're going to lose your starting quarterback, you don't want a guy that's been a backup all his life. You want a guy that has been a starting quarterback and been successful and been successful in this season. And that's Jeff Garcia. And Garcia rejuvenating his career and in effect in a Marty Morningweg who was an assistant and that's part of the reason they brought Garcia in because he'd worked with Marty. You know Marty had a, a pretty disastrous couple of years as the head coach of the Lions and now his career is on the ascent again because of this. Right and, and Marty is as good for Jeff Garcia as Jeff Garcia is for Marty. Second down and seven and it's morning like who's calling the plays and that pass is caught by Schobel who has scored the game's only touchdown so Schobel makes a second catch and Bobby Carpenter the number one draft choice linebacker out of Ohio State makes the tackle. Right and the reason that Schobel was in there is because they have two tight ends L.J. Smith is also in there. So so he has the two tight ends and they line up side by side. L.J. Smith goes deep. Matt Schobel comes in underneath. I mean these are these are the types of things that Andy Reid's offense has always done but Jeff Garcia runs very very well and Bill Parcells is saying what the heck is going on out there we don't have the answers first and 10 from the 11 Westbrook Parcells has to be thinking to a team that's given up 70 points and nine touchdown passes in the last two games has already yielded an 89 yard drive and this drive started back at the four. So this drive right now 87 yards for Philadelphia. Yeah and, and he knows that that's going to wear his defense down and you can see I know it's it's only the second quarter but you can see the effect of it now. I mean this is a Philadelphia Eagle big strong offensive line and they're kind of handling the, the defense of the Cowboys and that Cowboy defense even though they rotate a lot are getting worn down. On second and eight. Westbrook cuts it back inside and takes it down to the two and a half. So third down and the yard maybe two with under seven minutes to play in the half. Coleman and Watkins in on the tackle. You know there's two things on this play. I mean one you when you just have to watch the offensive line I mean, when that when that ball is snapped watch him just take off. I've never and just get that push right there and then watch the, the burst of Brian Westbrook. I and mean, those are the you know the combination big strong offensive line take off control the line of scrimmage and then a quick back in behind it who has a burst. Now they have both the backs in there Westbrook and Buckholder split backs on third and two. And this is Westbrook keeps those legs churning but appears to come up a little bit short of the first down that's Ferguson making the tackle. So now Andy Reid has the same decision to make in effect that Parcells had Bill went for it on fourth and goal. This is not a goal to go situation right here but it's still fourth down. Do you kick the chip shot field goal by Akers or do you go for it. And yeah. right now they're going to send the field goal unit out. And I was just going to say that's what I would do. I would I would kick the field goal. I mean you're on the road. You have a seven point lead. This can give you a 10 point lead. You have the momentum. Everything is going your way. You don't want to give anything to the Cowboys right now. John Dornbus will snap it. And the kick is good. But we have a flag before down the snap, before delay. Five yard penalty still fourth. Before the snap it's a delay it's only five yards and then it'll just make it uh, about two percent more difficult. How about John Dornbus in the <laughs> in the trick city at last night. The Eagles brought him in and, and, and he's a magician. And you know he was showing card tricks and uh, and and he's really something you know you, you sit there and 
And every time you say the same, how do you do that? I felt like paying a cover charge. <laughs> he was in there for 20 minutes. It was great. <laughs> no, he put on a great show for us. I mean, he's a real deal. 25-yard attempt by Akers, and that one is good with 5-16 remaining in the half. So it was a drive that went 94 yards, but it's only three points, and it's 10 to nothing, Philadelphia. Christmas Day at Texas Stadium. Ho, ho, ro, mo. <laughs> Tony Romo. This is a great day to have this game, and you know, for the division championship, and you know, I mean, everything at stake, and and you know, they're playing like two top teams, and it, you know, I mean, you get at the end of the season, and you still have a big, meaningful game like this on this day. Uh, this is great. Akers kicking off. Last time Austin ran one back, he fumbled. This time he covers up to make sure he secures the ball and goes down at the 19 yard line. Tackled there by Quentin Michael. All over the place. 5 10 to the half. 10 0 Eagles. Here, but Carrie Underwood won the American Idol competition a couple of years ago. She performed here at halftime, I'm told. Thanksgiving Day met Tony Romo. They've been talking by phone. So now she's down here. Well, anyway, you know, pick up People Magazine and read the rest. That's about as far as we can go with that, John. Well, I think we have some pictures of them on the field before the game, though. I know we do, as oh. Romo's pass is incomplete, intended for Lusaka Polite. And, and there it was, well, before a couple of hours before the game. The thing about, you know, Romo. As much fun as it's been for the, for the fans, it's been like twice as much fun for him. He is relishing every moment. And of course, you know, now you've got Parcells on the other side, and Bill's trying to, you know, put away the anointing oil and just yeah. keep his head on straight. That would drive him nuts. I mean, if I was <laughs> coaching course. and I saw that, that would drive me crazy. Yep. I'd say, what the heck's going on out there? Yep. As Vince Lombardi said. <laughs> as Vince Lombardi would say right like, now. Right? What's going on out there? What's going on? Can you believe that? Second down and 10. Romo pulls down the high snap, then throws pass caught by Creighton up to the 31 yard line. And this Patrick Creighton is a guy who doesn't get a lot of airtime or acclaim or ink because you've got Owens and you've got Terry Glenn. So he's the number three guy. But right now, the pass rating on passes intended by Cowboy quarterbacks to Creighton, the highest for any receiver in the league. Right. And that's a heck of a throw by Tony Romo, you know, where he's moving to his right. And he just stops and just kind of throws that ball. And, you know, uh, to Patrick Creighton, who Bill Parcells reminds him a lot of Heinz Ward. And that pass is caught by Owens. So Terrell Owens fighting for that extra yardage turns a six yard gain into about a nine yard gain. Right. And that was Terrell Owens' first ball. And I think that, you know, you know, that Tony Romo probably knew and felt. You know, we have to get the ball to Terrell Owens. We have to get him involved in the game. This is his first catch. The corner again is a little off. And then he just runs him off. And you see Brian Dawkins come in there and miss a tackle. I mean, that's that's one thing about Terrell Owens. He is so big and strong, and he's as good or better than anyone running after the catch. He's not one of those guys that's going to catch it and go to the ground. He's going to catch it and try and score with it every time. On second and one now, Jones probes the left side. Nothing cooking there as the Philly defense is able to penetrate the run defense and stop him back of the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down. You know, Andrew was talking earlier about Terrell Owens and, you know, his hand problems when he had surgery on his hand and he has a torn tendon. Watch how he catches a ball. He doesn't use his fingers. He lets the ball come in and he just squeezes it between his palms. But. If they can get a first down here, I would start to feed Terrell Owens. I think that you know he wants to get into this game and he wants to make something big happen. Tight formation, third and two. Now they give it to Barber, who couldn't get into the end zone on three thrusts on the goal to go situation, but this time he's able to move the chains. First down, tackle there by Darwin Walker. Clock ticking down to three minutes to go in the half. Yeah, I was watching T.O. in the you know in the pregame catching the ball and just. Watch. You could see that he was struggling. That that he didn't want to use his fingers. He was trying to catch the ball in his palms, and you know, and and just adjust to that. Now, 
Now, he has been dropping the ball, but he's always dropped the ball. I mean, he dropped the ball before he had hand and finger problems. He looked like a sculptor's model before the game. Here's Romo. And that's incomplete. That's Patrick Creighton trying to haul that one in. Covered by Lito Shepard. We go to Andrea. Well, Terrell Owens, you're talking about the way he uh, is having trouble catching the ball. But one of the Cowboys coaches told me that he can't use his hands with defenders at the line. So what they want him to try to do is to tighten down to the lineman so he has more room to run to the boundary. They also told him, be more aggressive using your feet running downfield. You have to attack the defender. Thank you. you. Know, he's, he's so big and strong, Alan Andrea. I think that when they come up and press him, which they're not on this play, I think he ought to just run right over because I've seen him do that in the past. On second down and 10, and that pass is thrown out of bounds, but there is a flag down at the 39 yard line. Roderick Hood covering on the play. Hood covering Owens. Was there illegal contact? You know, and again, that's going to be after five yards, and that's what everyone's been doing to Terrell Owens is getting him along that sideline and pushing him. Illegal and contact. He gets too close to the boundary. Defense number 29. Five-yard penalty automatic. First down. Yeah, illegal contact, different than pass interference. That pass was was not catchable. If it was pass interference, it would have been waved off, but not illegal contact. Yeah, see, and and the reason it's illegal contract contact, it's after five yards, and the. First five yards coming off the line of scrimmage, you can contact him. If it's after five yards, you cannot contact him, and that's when Rod Hood contacted him. But Terrell Owens is having the same problem. He's been having that three or four weeks that he's getting too close to the boundary, and he's not giving his quarterback any room to throw the ball on that deep up pattern. Sheldon Brown lines up on a one-on-one -on -one here on the left side. Romo escaping. Tony's going to run. Picks up the first down. And considerably more to the 35 yard line. Sliding to a halt. Carey loves it. And we're ticking down to the two minute warning. 16 yard run by Tony R. That's the longest of his career. And Bill Parcells will bring him over to talk about things. Two minute warning. Cowboys have all of their timeouts left. Philly has the lead. 10 zip. Back here with two minutes to go in the half 10 to nothing Eagles first and 10 Dallas at the Philadelphia 37 yard line Cowboys have all of their timeouts Romo out of the shotgun and that's caught by the tight end Jason Witten and that will be enough for a first down spot the ball just inside the 27 yard line put it at the 26 you know and you just had the feeling it was time to get the ball to Jason Witten there tight end that's a that's the first pass that he caught in the the closer you get to the goal line I think the more you know important that tight end is and the and the Cowboys have been using a lot of formations with with two tight ends this time they have three wide receivers Glenn left Creighton in the slot Owens right from the shotgun stepping up throws over the middle that's caught holding by Creighton to the 19 yard line and a flag is down in the center of the field at the 14. I think I'd put Owens in the slot and let him do some of those things. I mean he's he's just playing out wide and just getting knocked out of bounds. And one thing that the Cowboys know Tony Romo knows when you get close in this area with a Jim Johnson defense you're going to get blitzed. Before the pass holding defense number 24 five yard penalty. First down. That's Sheldon Brown holding Creighton a minute and 13 to go now. And you see Tony Romo reading the play off his wristband to send in a number and then he reads the play with the corresponding number puts in his mouthpiece and then he's ready to go. Owens and Glenn both to the left this time Creighton to the right. Eagles are in nickel defense. Jones is the setback. They're going to give it to Jones. Jones exploits a hole through the middle, takes it down to the 14 yard line. Tackled there by Sean Considine. Clock ticking down to a minute. Sean Considine got up there a little late. He had that hole. Here's a, here's a wristband that Tony Romo is wearing, and you can see that you, you have to be pretty sharp to be a quarterback, and you have to have pretty good eyes. 
to read that small print. But you can see the you know the reds and the yellows and they're all for set sections on the field. Second and three. And Romo is going to throw that one into the end zone and caught by Owens. So Owens comes back toward the middle of the field gets away from Sheldon Brown and T.O. puts Dallas on the board. You know, and that's where where Terrell Owens has always been so good is on on broken play routes. And you're going to see Romo here. He comes in the pocket. He's looking to the right. There's nothing there. He has a little hole to his left. He moves into that hole. Terrell Owens in the end zone keeps moving and makes that play. The middle is open. Gramatica for the point after. And with 36 seconds, the Cowboys didn't have to use a single timeout, and they took a lot of time off the clock, leaving Philly with about a half minute, 10-7. Andrea Kramer 10 7 Philadelphia on top Owens catching his 12th touchdown of the season 12 touchdown receptions most in the league Marvin Harrison caught his 11th yesterday for the Colts bouncing kick Lino Mahi will run it back and scramble forward up to the 36 yard line tackled there by Roy Williams with 29 seconds remaining in the first half. First place in the NFC at stake. 10-7 Eagles. That's a tough one. We've been bad. No, I've been good, Roman. Well, why has he been bad, Roman? Because he keeps trying to hit, hit me. I do not, Roman. Yeah? I am nice to you. <laughs> Little John Putz, who didn't have to answer that. Yeah, when you're not sure, that means you're not, you haven't been good. Here's Westbrook, and he's going to take it up to the 44 yard line, a nine yard gain, and Philadelphia will take a timeout with 25 seconds as they try to at least move it into field goal range. In the NFC East, Chicago, of course, has already clinched the top spot in the conference. So the road to the Super Bowl in the NFC will go through Chicago. Now the Saints at the moment have the number two seed and they would clinch a bye if Philadelphia wins this game. Second down and one from the 44 after the timeout. Garcia will pack it in across the 50 runs for a first down 46 yard line. They'll take a timeout here with 18 seconds still trying to get it into field goal range as the half winds down. Seven yard career long field goal that was in 2003. He's never missed in this stadium and they're trying to set him up for a three point opportunity here as the pass is caught by Westbrook. They do not have a timeout so Westbrook has to step out of bounds. They're going to have to move the ball a little farther down the field and think about that clock either by going out of bounds or leaving time for a spike. Yeah, they probably need about you know 12 to 15 more yards and you know and that can be a deep in or that type of thing and then as you say come up and spike it I don't know that you want to go for another four or five yard pass I think you want to think beyond 10 yards we have three guys out here on this side and one this is a three by one three in the right one in the left try to get it down to around the 30 second and six Garcia gets flushed out clock keeps ticking and then he has to throw that one incomplete near side 38 yard line intended for Dante Stallworth and now they're really pinned in a tough spot because with eight seconds you're not going to leave time for a spike if you complete one over the middle it's going to pick up enough to put acres in position so you have to complete one for 12 to 15 yards and get out of bounds and do it within eight seconds. You're right and the and the Cowboys defense knows that so you're not only protected against the pass look at yeah. <laughs> look at this. They're, they're putting T.O. in there on defense and he's just going to be a safety you know for that for that deep pass that Hail Mary type of thing. They have two receivers on either side and I think you either do that or you go for the sideline. Yeah he's playing goalie right now instead the pass is caught on the outside and with one second left that is Greg Lewis and Lewis will put them in position as he gets to the 27 yard line for about a 45 yard field goal attempt so that was pretty good 16 yards 
with seven seconds elapsed. You know, Owens went back to Keyshawn Johnson playing for Parcells. They had a had an interception in a playoff game a few right. years ago. I mean, they were expecting that deep pass, the jump ball in the end zone. Jeff Garcia on that completion made a big, big play for the Eagles. 45 yard attempt for Akers. And Akers' kick is just inside the left upright. So a masterful job, especially at the very end, that 16 yard gain that took only seven seconds to make it 13 to 7. The turn of the halftime show comes up on the other side of the break. This game will win the division, and that was, you know, our first step when this season started. And we're playing for a playoff position. We're playing for a division title. Those are meaningful things. You would have thought that once the Donovan went down, their their, their season went went downhill too. But they have a lot of um, veterans on that team that um, they picked up the slack. Ho, 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 ho. Well, I want to be giving opportunities to my receivers and to the running backs and tight ends to make plays. Yeah, it's better to give than receive tonight. Merry Christmas. And uh, that note, as you look up through the hole in the roof, Al Michaels with John Madden and Andrea Kramer, and now down through the hole in the roof. Third quarter ready to start. Eagles on top, 13 to 7. Eagles with 14 straight road wins when leading at the half, which they are right now by six. And away we go. Grammaticus kick will just get into the end zone. Reno Mahe letting it go. And of course, if it goes out before it gets to the end zone, the ball comes out to the 40 yard line. But by going across the goal line, it's the 20 on a touchback. Garcia now, the first half for him. Right on the money most of the time. 10 out of 13 for 145 yards. Improv improvisational pass right there and then John the touchdown. Well yeah I mean he, he was darn near perfect but you look at you know how he moves in the pocket but is always looking upfield. He never takes his eyes off anything. He's always looking upfield and that play just before the half was big. He had eight seconds to go and he had to get that play up the field and out of bounds and he did it in seven seconds. And got 16 yards to set up a 45 yard acres field goal. Ryan Westbrook starts the third quarter up to the 23 yard line. Second down and seven. Some of the numbers now. Philadelphia, the better job on the ground. A few more passing yards. And uh, time of possession, about four minutes more. And they have run, or did run, seven more plays in the first half than did the Cowboys. And that thing about Andy Reid, you know, you know, being ahead at halftime, so he really believes in that. I mean, that's why he likes to come out and throw so much early in the game to get that lead. Garcia got protected well. Basket looks around for a flag. There is none. The tight coverage there by Terrence Newman, third down. You know, and if the if the Cowboys are going to get a rush, it's going to be that guy there, Demarcus Ware. I mean, he's. You know at one time they had Demarcus Ware on one side and Greg Ellis on the other side so they had two pretty dominant pass rushers. Greg Ellis is injured out for the season and now really Demarcus Ware if they don't blitz is their only dominant pass rusher. And William Thomas is doing a pretty good job against him today. Here's a way to get pressure right here. They pick up the blitz through the middle and then the pass is. Caught by L.J. Smith with only Newman there to stop him, and he does inside the 15-yard line. So the blitz was coming. You had Roy Williams coming right up through the middle. They had Nathan Jones coming right up through the middle. Newman goes down. He'll need a moment to get back up, but a big gain there, 66 yards on the third down play. Yeah, we saw Jeff Garcia, you know, use his legs, and now he uses his head because he sees that blitz, and he know, he calls a perfect play for it. He lets him blitz. L.J. Smith goes like he's going to block, and then and then delays a little, and then comes off the line of scrimmage, and, and Jeff Garcia hits him perfectly. That play was set up for that blitz. Officially a 65-yard gain. Buck Walker in the backfield. 
Garcia takes the snap out of the shotgun. Has time. Under pressure now. Gets it away. Caught Westbrook, who was flanked out, makes the catch and is out of bounds near the 10 yard line. You know, isn't that something we talked about the offensive line of the Eagles and they've really given Jeff Garcia a lot of time and then you know he's able to move in the pocket and find passing lanes. I mean watch his pass protection here. He can look left he can look right then he can run right. He just runs out of space there. Spears was bearing down on him as he released at second down and eight at the ten. Garcia lofting one incomplete Smith was there he was covered on the play by Al Singleton the linebacker and Garcia looking for a flag and there is a flag now at the two yard line Mike Carey is the referee L.J. Smith looking for that same flag you're talking about pass interference offense Ooh. number 82 penalty is declined brings up third down he wasn't looking for that flag <laughs> no. <laughs> Not against him. He was looking for one for him. But you're going to see him. He's on the he's on the right side of the screen. L.J. Smith, the tight end, right there. He's okay there. He's okay there. I don't know unless he just pushed off right at the end. But you know he was he was okay coming off the line of scrimmage. And unless just before he went for that ball, he pushed Al Singleton off. I'm not sure of that one. Third down and eight from the ten yard line. Garcia going to pack it in and take it down to the three yard line tackled there by Brady James. Now do you send in the field goal and make it a two possession game in the meantime you've got Jay Ratliff the defensive lineman the nose tackle who's down on the turf so extra time for Reed to make his choice here. This NFL special and NBC being brought to you by Budweiser Select. Brewed longer for a bold taste that finishes clean. Expect everything by Verizon Wireless. By Chevrolet, America's brand Chevy in American Revolution. And by Subway Restaurant, Subway Eat Fresh. Do you ever make a gingerbread house? I've eaten one. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, and I've never made one, although. I saw my son and my grandsons made one the other night and I was there as an observer. <laughs> a seasoned observer. No we don't construct those. Akers is going to come in and they, on a fourth and one for a 21 yard field goal to make it a two possession game. Right, and this this is this is what I would do too. And the kick is good. So Akers now with three field goals. Meanwhile Ratliff was assisted off the field after the injury timeout. Eagles now leading the Cowboys by nine early third. A quote from Bill Parcells the game tells you what you are and that's what Bill looked like in late October. Bottom of the barrel when they lost to the Giants but then the following week we're almost starting he became the kissing bandit more kissing on a field. And since when Morgana was running out of the stands in baseball stadiums in the 70s and then that exultant look it doesn't get any better than that for Parcells the win against the Giants about three weeks ago but now well right now he's down 16 to 7. Hey, Bill Parcells can't live with it and can't live without, without it. it right with or without you Miles Austin. Running it back to the 22. Some of the uh, takes by Bill tonight. This was after the Miles Austin fumble. We've seen that before. That's three straight games that Austin has fumbled in. That look came a little later on. Well, that's that I closed one is the one I just can't believe this. Yep. But now we're going to find out a little more about Tony Romo. You know, yep. the, you know, when things are going well in your lead, that's one team being, you know, one thing being a quarterback. But now you have, you know, a couple possessions, you're down, a couple possession lead down, and you know you have to make some plays to win the game. Julius Jones. One thing that the Cowboys have been unable to do tonight is to establish a running game. They've now run the ball 13 times 
for 37 yards less than three yards per carry. You know we talked about DeMarcus Ware being the dominant player on the on the Cowboy defense and on the Eagle defense it's 58 Trent Cole. He's that guy if you're going to you know, have to get someone blocked. You know, who's the guy we have to get blocked in the front for. It's going to be Trent Cole all the time. Second down and nine. Under pressure Romo gets smacked and then a flag comes down and the pass was dropped by Terry Glenn. So a lot of things going on. Romo buried by Mike Patterson got it away. Glenn dropping it but a flag down in the secondary. But you use the word Illegal smacked contact. and he really got Defense smacked. Defense number 24. Five yard penalty automatic. First down. Sheldon Brown. That's the thing, you know. We always, you know, think these quarterbacks are fancy guys and they're kissing singers and all that stuff. But <laughs> you have to be tough to play this game. To have guys rushing at you, coming in your face, and you step right into it. I mean, you see here. Now, now watch the pressure come, and he just has to step mm -hmm. right into it, and he steps right into it and completes the pass, or should have completed the pass. Got the penalty on it. Romo throws underneath. This is Witten, the tight end, and he gets dragged down by the middle linebacker, Jeremiah Trotter, after a gain of six. You know what I was saying about Tony Romo? You find out about him. It's not that you, know, you find out if he can play or any of those things because, you know, he can do that. But these are situations they've never been in. I mean, it's his fourth year, but his first year as a starter. And, you know, so every, every situation like this is going to be the first time he's ever been in these situations. And, you have to see how he's going to react, and he has to come up big time now. With a lot on the line. Jones, because a couple of weeks ago after they beat the Giants, it looked as if the Cowboys would have a cakewalk to the title. And now all of a sudden, if Philadelphia wins the game and they lead by nine, the teams would have identical records of nine and six, but Philly would own the tie break by virtue of beating Dallas in both meetings. Mike Carey wants to measure here. One irony tonight Philadelphia has been very vulnerable lately to the run. But not tonight they've been very tough against the run. Well you know it always helps your 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 run defense or your defense period is, is a lead. And you get ahead and you get a two possession lead you get ahead 16 to 7 and now this team just can't run 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 and take advantage of you. I mean they know that they you know they have to get points they have to move the ball they have to get first down and then turn into points and so they at some point and not yet it's too early but at some point they become one dimensional and then the Eagles just go after you from the 38 yard line on first and 10 short drop by Romo pump fake under pressure down he goes in the arms of Darwin Walker the seventh year tackle out of Tennessee. Yeah, and that's one of those things you know how they always say that a quarterback has to have a clock in his head and I think Tony Romo you know pumped one too many times I mean he has you can see this is where he's looking he's looking for his left he doesn't have anything open out there and then and then he it, now you don't have there now you don't have there you have to get down you have to get out you can't hang in there you don't have that much time the clock has to say okay if I didn't do it then and if I don't do it now I got to get out of here. Walker had three sacks of Bledsoe in that October 8th game. Nine yard sack, second and 19. Romo comes back the other way, and nobody's home there. Roderick Hood was closest to it. Owens had moved out and then went back in, and the pass was thrown outside. So it's third down and 19. Right, and the, and the play before, I think his clock was a little slow. On that play there, I think his clock was a little fast. Because he was probably saying that same thing to myself, you know, I can't wait that long. I can't pump. I can't stand in the pocket that long. I have to get the ball out of my hand. That time, you know, he just was thinking, I got to get rid of this ball quickly. Philly can make it seem as if it's a New York minute on that pass rush. Third down and 19 at the 29 yard line. And the Eagles have six defensive backs in there now. They'll rush four. Romo flushed out to the left launching one deep down the sideline and dropped Owens was there looked as if he could come up with it couldn't handle it Jerry Jones already on the sideline right and uh, Terrell Owens was very close to the sideline you see 
This is his problem he's having. He takes an outside release, then he gets too close to the boundary and sometimes just run out of bounds. So even if he caught that, I don't think that would have been a completed pass because he was out of bounds. But I've been watching him, you know, you know, this in the last three or four games, he's doing that all the time, getting taking an outside release and just going out of bounds. Matt McBriar sends one to the 19 yard line, and Brian Westbrook will run it back to the 31 with 917 left in the third. T.O. puts one on the ground and the Eagles lead by nine. See we're saving on graphics that guy's doing it for us. Heroes the great new show on NBC will resume on January 22nd. At 9 Eastern Pacific 8 Central and not Heroes back on the 22nd of January about four weeks right here on NBC. So now the Philadelphia Eagles have the ball Owens back on the bench one touchdown reception tonight but now the drop there leading to the punt leading to Garcia and company going to work from the 32 yard line Westbrook shaves it off to the right side and picks up nine up to the 40 yard line Brian Westbrook over a thousand yards rushing for the first time in his career this season and their leading receiver as well. You know and, and that's a special run right there. I mean you know how many guys can do that. He he starts it's like a dive to the left and he ends up he's going to start here to the left and end up all the way outside on the right side then make about three cuts before he turns up field. Okay, he's a he's a he's a special back but more than a, a special back. I think he's just a special football player. Westbrook was flanked to the left that time, and Buckhalter gets the carry, and Carell gets corralled. Christmas Day, you know, it, it's tough being a Christmas baby because you know what do you do for presents? You, you get short shrifted. Well, happy birthday to Sean Andrews, December 25th, 1982. Yeah, well, his birthday present was he's going to Hawaii for the for the Pro Bowl and. You know he deserves it. I mean he, he's he's really one of the better guards in football and he's worked hard a year ago. He weighed 380 pounds. Came in this year at about 340 and 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 he's a, a lot more dominant guard on third and a short two. Garcia is going to step it up and get the first down. Comes out of the pocket gets taken down by Singleton picks up the first down on a four yard carry. <laughs> look at that look on Reed's face. Look at that look on Parcells. Yeah, right. Famous Christmas babies. <laughs> it's hard to believe. Well, Ken Stabler, to say Ken Stabler and baby in the same sentence, well, you know what I mean. Or but, Larry Zonka or and Larry's. baby in the same sentence. <laughs> right, but happy birthday to those two guys. Yeah, two great ones. Yeah. I coached one for many, many years and yeah. competed against the other for many, many years. And there's a beautiful little Christmas baby from the 44 yard line with seven minutes to play in the period Garcia going deep and incomplete you had Westbrook going all the way down the field and one of the things that happens when you send him deep a linebacker has to go back with him and Singleton was equal to the task. Yeah and that's what Brian Westbrook will do to you you know we talked about him you know lining up in the backfield lining up and slide going in motion and then you put him out here as a receiver and you look there's no one covered him no wonder Jeff Garcia is going that way the Cowboys really didn't adjust until right to the end he was he was standing out here right now all by himself and if, if Jeff Garcia makes a little mm -hmm. better pass yep. that could have been a touchdown closest guy to him was linebacker Al Singleton second down and 10 43 yard line and where with the sack and the fumble but there to cover it up is Carell Buckwalter to save possession back at the 26 yard line but sooner or later you know where would come bursting through Gets the sack and the forced fumble, but Philadelphia gets the recovery. You know, and the one thing that if, if you're going to block DeMarcus Ware, you had better get a, a tackle on him. And they try and block him with a tight end and a running back, and that is not going to work. L.J. Smith is not going to block DeMarcus Ware in pass protection. 16 yard loss on the play, third down and 26. And 
that's what you normally do on third and 26. You're not looking for the first down. You're looking to pick up about 10. And that's what they do there with Westbrook with Brady James making the tackle. Give yourself a little bit better field position because you know you're going to punt. Andy Reid brought a, an old school play back there that split backs trap. You know, there's been so so much one back, so much eye formation that the old split backs really, you know, something that was big in professional football and we don't see as much anymore. But but the Philadelphia Eagles are running split backs as they did on that play and run the split back trap. Dirk Johnson to punt. Terrence Newman will run it back. Newman collects it at the 11 yard line. Dancing out past the 20. And then taken down by the ankle at the 18 yard line. Good tackle by Sean Considine. Five and a half left in the third. Philadelphia 16, Dallas 7. Have a holly jolly Christmas. Christmas special being brought to you by Wendy's. Do Wendy's new deluxe value meals do what tastes right? After sunset, in the Metroplex, Texas Stadium, Irving. About three more years before the Cowboys move to Arlington into their brand new billion dollar edifice. First and ten at the 19 yard line. And this drive begins with a snap over Romo's head, but he collects it, directs traffic to throws, and it's caught by Witten. He stayed about as cool as anybody in the stadium yep. after that snap. That's the old thing about it. you want the guy back there that can come in and sink the eight ball, and that's exactly the guy you have right here. I mean, the snap comes out at 12 o'clock, and he just stays cool, picks it up, still looks upfield, and finds his receiver. I mean I mean picking that thing up the way it bounces is tough finding a receiver is tough and then getting them the ball and your brain has to say at one point do I just dive on it. I think I, I think that Tony Romo has great athletic instincts and we just saw him right there. Yep. Ball start. Ball start. Offense number 75. Five yard penalty is still second half. That's Mark Colombo who's really had a great year Bill Parcells. Always singling him out every time we do a, a Dallas game. One time number one draft choice of the Bears, but a real serious knee injury, short circuited his career, but uh, he's been rejuvenated since coming to Dallas. Yeah, and the and the Cowboys were down at tackle. I mean, that was one of the weak spots, and they needed someone to get in there. And Mark Colombo has not only got in there, but he's got in there and played well. That's the Cowboys' first penalty of the game and now you're going to have a second penalty so they go almost 40 Ball minutes start. offense number 76 five yard penalty second half. that's flows L Adams in fact they went 40 minutes and 32 seconds without a penalty and then they get them back to back and, and those are the type of things that I know you're expecting pass rush and so on but you know when you're at home those are disciplined things that really really shouldn't be happening. I'm sure that's exactly what that man's thinking. Second and 14. From the 15 yard line. Defense is yelling, watch out for the draw. That's Barber. There it is. Yeah, there it was. The defense was right on top of it. Three yard gain for Barber. Jeremiah Trotter right in the middle of the action and obviously a well coached unit as any Jim Johnson coached unit would be right and the fans are booing now because they probably are thinking the same thing you know why run a draw you know and you could just you could just hear the defense just listen to it that is before that but they were saying watch a draw watch a draw and that's exactly what the cow now the Cowboys are going to go off on the sideline and tell their coaches and they know what our plays are. They're calling our, our plays before we run them. <laughs> Third down and 10 out of the shotgun. Romo under pressure, and he's going to get sacked at the 13 yard line by Darren Howard, who came over from the New Orleans Saints to apply pressure from the left defensive end. So the Dallas Cowboys, after Romo turned what would have been a disaster into a six yard gain, two penalties. And then a three yard run which was sniffed out and a sack. Yeah and you're going to see him he he goes in and plays defensive tackle on the on the nickel. He just takes Marco Rivera and he takes that right arm and just boom and just throws him right to the side and goes straight up in Tony Romo's face. 
McBriar's punt. The Pro Bowl punter sends that one to the 39 yard line where Hurd is right there to tackle Brian Westbrook. Two and a half minutes remaining in the third. Philly trying to move into first place in the NFC East, up by nine. Hi, this is Lito Shepard with the Philadelphia Eagles. Me and my family, my wife Nicole, son Taz, Terrell, and my daughter Megan, would like to wish you and your family a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. <laughs> Know who Dad Dad was? Yeah, <laughs> that was cute. <laughs> Lito Shepard getting his hand wrapped. The offense is back out for Philadelphia. 38-yard line. 2:39 to go in the third. And that pass to Westbrook after he looked at Westbrook, and then a flag comes in at the end of the play. You know Jeff Garcia is is playing like it's a it's a holiday and he's playing out in the park. I mean he's he, he really has a great feel Offense, of this game. Number 82 blocking downfield. Ten yard penalty it's still first down. L.J. Smith. Well you know what it was it was a broken screen play it was supposed to be a screen and Garcia goes to see the screen and he and he can't so he holds it and then hits the ball up the field so it was thrown, it was supposed to be thrown behind the line of scrimmage mm -hmm. the screen was developed and the screen just broke down. But you know, you know, I've known Jeff Garcia now, you know, for a long time. I mean, he grew up in California, close to where I live, and I've never seen him as animated and as full of energy as he was last night. I mean, you just had the feeling that he knew last night he was ready to play the game that he's playing now. Draw play, Westbrook. I think part of it, John, is he's back from the dead, figuratively speaking. Well, of course, it's figuratively speaking, not <laughs> literally. But in terms of the fact. I mentioned it before even NFL fans who, who cover the game game you know we're wondering where's Jeff Garcia well he'd signed with Philadelphia didn't get any publicity in the Philadelphia area of course you know who the backup quarterback is and then all of a sudden McNabb gets hurt and people go oh Garcia is still playing well now Garcia is playing and right now he's on the cusp of leading them to a fourth straight win yeah, but he, he just knows how to play the game I mean, he's a great competitor and, and he, he's as fiery as any other quarterback that I know. Second and 16, and that pass and stopping to make the catch on it was Reggie Brown. So the pass a little underthrown, but Brown was right there, had position on Terrence Newman, and that gain will take it out to the 45 and set up a third and three. You know, and he's a he's a guy who grew up. You know, his dad was a coach, and 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 his dad coached him when he was young. His dad coached him in junior college, and and just the way he's playing, it's like, you know. It just comes over. But whatever he has to do to get the job done, he's doing. Third down and three at the 45. And that pass is lofted over the middle and incomplete. So the pressure was on. Garcia may be feeling that somebody should have been going a little farther on his route over the middle. Fourth down. You know, John, maybe some of that emotion comes from his mother. His mother was in the stands when Garcia won the Grey Cup one year, and he <laughs> wins the Grey Cup, and he's looking for his family, and he's looking for his mom. And the next thing you know, somebody's jumping on his back. It's his mother. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, his his mother and his father. His father is named Bob. You know, Bob from Gilroy. And he used to <laughs> he used to call the talk shows all the time. And, and you know, you know, talk about you know Jeff Garcia and the 49ers, and he was always Bob from Gilroy, and yeah. they finally found out that Bob from Gilroy was Bob Garcia, and Steve Mariucci had to tell Jeff Garcia, "Hey, tell Bob from Garcia from, yeah. from Gilroy to knock it off." Yeah, no. lay off Garcia. Next week, we don't know what the game will be yet, but there will be Sunday night football, eight o'clock Eastern time, New Year's Eve. We'll flex into a game to be determined later tonight, tomorrow morning. You'll read about it, whatever it is. Hopefully, it will have some impact and meaning in terms of the playoff situation because it is so complicated and wild right now. But as far as Philadelphia is concerned, all they know is if they win the game, they are in the playoffs. And then if they win the game and beat Atlanta next week, they win the NFC East or somehow lose the game to Atlanta and Detroit beats Dallas, they'd still win the division. Romo throwing underneath and for Jones and that play was broken up again by that 
pressure put on by that Philadelphia front. Right, and that's that's what this Eagle defense is, you know, and that's what Jim Johnson needs. You need a good offense. And when he has a good offense that gets him a lead, like 16 to 7, then they become very, very aggressive. If they're behind, then they have to play normal defense and you can get to them. When they get this kind of lead, when they get you down a little, they're really going to go after you. Second down and 10, final minute, third quarter. And Romo has his head taken off. And that may create a penalty because Trent Cole was there and you saw him get hit and the head twisted around and Trent Cole is flat. Personal foul. Roughly the passer. Defense number 58. Blow to the head. 15 yard automatic. First down. Well, you know, in that situation, we're just talking about the lead. They're they're really gonna come after you. Here comes number 58, Trent Cole. Again, you can't block that big pass rusher with a running back. They try and do it with Julius Jones. And I guess it's that right hand to the head is what they call the, the pass block. The, the, the pass rush was excellent. You know, then he's trying to get there. And these, these rushers today in the NFL can't do anything to the quarterback. Blow to the head. Automatic first. Here's Jones. And Jones trying to break it. Picks up six. Tackled there by Dahani Jones. That's nine carries for 32 yards for their leading rusher. This was Parcells after the last offensive possession, the one that resulted in the bad snap, in the two penalties, and the sack. Second and five. On the final play of the quarter, and that pass intended for Glenn is incomplete. So we'll have 15 minutes of regulation to go. At the end of three, the Philadelphia Eagles lead the Dallas Cowboys 16 to 7. This NFL special will continue right after these messages from your NBC station. John Madden, Andrea Kramer, Texas Stadium. Start the fourth quarter again. Looking at the playoff picture. Bears are home. Week off, and then they'll start the weekend of Jan 13th. The Saints, right now the number two seed. The Saints would get a bye if Philadelphia maintains its lead, wins the game here tonight. Third down and five from the 40 yard line as Romo goes back into the pocket, throws, caught tight end Witten, and Witten will take the ball into Eagle territory to the 46 yard line, first down. Either that umpire was the best defender or Witten's best friend because there was a pretty good crowd in there. There was Witten, there was a defender, and there was the official. Tony Romo gets it right there. What's the official right here? I mean, he doesn't know whether to watch Witt and to see if they're doing anything wrong to him or just get out of the way. He decides the latter. And Farrell, the umpire, on this two. Jones will take it inside the 40 to the 39 yard line. Flows L. Adams pulling and helping to lead the way for Julius Jones. And take a look at that in the fourth quarter this season. The second biggest differential belonging to the Cowboys. Only the Chargers have a bigger fourth quarter differential in scoring. Tony Romo got him up there to no huddle. Yep. And going deep on second and short. And it is intercepted in the end zone by Brian Dawkins. So with Owens covered by Brown, he's always going to get help over the top. And over the top means Brian Dawkins with the interception. Yeah, it's exactly what Jim Johnson told us last night. He said, we're going to. We're going to double T.O. as much as we can. I said, who are you going to do it with? He said, Brian Dawkins will always be over the top. Heck of a play. By Dodge, you can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge by seductively smooth to Heineken Premium Light. By the terrifying new thriller, The Hitcher, in theaters everywhere, January the 19th. And by Sprint, be a better fan with NFL Mobile, only from Sprint. Power up. Downtown Dallas is powered up. Beautiful as always. Great architecture. Great lighting down there as well. Great play by Brian Dawkins. Uh, doubling T.O. Getting up over the top. Didn't go for the play fake. Just stayed back there. Now from the 20 yard line after Dawkins' fourth interception of the season. Westbrook 
He's taken down by Ferguson and back we go to the Dawkins pick. You know we talk about the lead being 16 to 7 and the way Philadelphia plays. Now here's Brian Dawkins in the and the Cowboys are going to go play pass but because they're ahead 16 to 7 Dawkins isn't going to go for it. He stays back there. Here we got Sheldon Brown. Here's T.O. He goes here. Dawkins stays back and goes over the top. You see the play fake Dawkins didn't go for it. He just stayed deep stayed deep. There's the ball. There's Dawkins. And Bill Parcells is saying you know if you're going to throw that deep one you have to check the free safety. Free play here where was offside. He was offside by about three yards yeah. wasn't it? <laughs> he was offside so far he just trotted he didn't even run. Cowboys are kind of self destructing you know it, you know they didn't get anything going and they you know maybe they speed it offside. up when it should have calmed down Defense a little. number 94. Is declined. The play results in a first down at the 30 yard line. Well, it's, it's it's nervous time here in Dallas. I mean, the Dallas Cowboys at the start of this game were in a position to make sure they had a home game in the playoffs, at least one, and maybe a bye had they won and then won next week in New Orleans loses. Now they're in a position, if they lose this game, of having to play a wild card game and have to get to the Super Bowl by winning three on the road. And not everybody's going to do what Pittsburgh did last year. You know that. Up to the 35 yard line and the Eagles who aren't even in the playoffs yet are now in a position where they may be looking at a home game. It could even be against Dallas the way things could turn out and at least have one game in Philadelphia on the way to a Super Bowl. You know and, and you always want to be peaking at the end of the season and uh, this Philadelphia Eagle team is doing that. I mean they're you know Jeff Garcia and we've talked about him their offensive line their running backs their wide receivers but again get them the lead. And this defense is still pretty good. Second and five. Play fake. Rolling left is Garcia. Chased by Ware. The slide to a halt. Picks up a first down. And you saw that shot of Jeff Lurie with his wife Christina, the owner of the Eagles. And in a way, very much reflecting this operation and organization. Bought the team in 95. And he brings in Andy Reid in 99. And no matter what happens, and we've said it a hundred times about Reid. Unflappable, and again he proves it this year. You lose McNabb, you lose an Indy, you're five and six. What are we going to do? <laughs> what are they going to do? Look at him right now. Right, and that's you know, I mean, Andy, when he wins, he doesn't get overly high on that, and when he loses, you know, he doesn't get overly low. I mean, he always, always, as you say, even keel, and I think you know his players feed off that. And this is Buckhalter inside the forty. Tough running all the way to the 39 yard line. Correll Buckhalter. And one big difference in the game tonight Philadelphia averaging 5.3 yards per rush, and Dallas less than three and a half per. You know, we were talking about all the things that Brian Westbrook does, and we talked about his running and his receiving, but look right here is blocking. I mean, he was a guy that blocks Roy Williams that really gets Buckhalter in the free. I mean this this offense has really taken it to the Cowboy defense. I mean they've they've kind of had them on their heels and they've kept them on their heels a lot like the New Orleans Saints did to this Cowboy defense two weeks ago. Buckhalter. It's another good gain through the middle and Philadelphia has outgained Dallas by better than a two to one ratio three hundred seventy seven total yards to one seventy. You know this is a, a Bill Walsh type thing you know where it used to be. In the old days in the NFL remember how you would start the game and you would establish the run in order to pass and Bill Walsh brought football a different level and he he came out passing you established the pass and then when you get the lead you go to the run and that's what the Eagles are doing right now. Second and four we know Bill is watching and send him our very best second and four and that's Westbrook who gets rolled down. By Watkins. In fact, it was because of Bill Walsh that Jeff Garcia even got in to the National Football League. Right. Bill Bill saw Jeff Garcia before anyone else did. I mean, I I know that, you know, when I first saw Jeff Garcia, and Bill said to me, he said, watch him, you know, and tell me what you think of him. And I didn't think he was very good. I didn't think he could play. Bill didn't ask me. And again, he said, hey, he said, watch this Garcia and see what you think. And then again, he didn't ask me because I would have told him this guy can't play. He's maybe the worst practice guy you've ever seen, but Bill Walsh knew that the guy's a competitor and he could play. 
And you know what? If he had called Central Casting and said, send me a quarterback, he's about the last guy they'd send. No, you wouldn't, you wouldn't send him. Time, Time out. out. Philadelphia, their first. 9-13, left in the fourth. Out of a um, reserve role and, and stepped up into the leadership role, and he's been playing very well, getting the guys fired up. He's been preparing like a true professional every week. And when his number was called, he was ready to play. Trotter on Garcia, who called a timeout here. Now a third down and one after a long discussion on the sideline. Let's see what the call is at the 30 yard line. I think if they go play action pass here, they get a touchdown. They split Reggie Brown to the left. And the Cowboys are in 4 4 3. There it is. And there will be play action. Pressure is on. But Garcia gets inside Spears, gets inside the 20, and finally tackled by Ware, who hurts his leg on the tackle. Garcia to the 17 yard line, a 13 yard gain after he was flushed out on a third and one, and Ware is down. <laughs> Look how fired up Jeff Garcia is. I mean, he's like a. He's like a middle linebacker playing quarterback and he's got a bloody elbow and a bloody hand and all of the rest. Right and, and they were going to go for the big play. I mean they were trying to get the the big score here and there was nothing open and Jeff Garcia said well you know I called it I got a bootleg I can run for that first down. He looked for the deep guy and he looked for the short guy didn't have anything there and went right back against the gray. And so for the Cowboys who needed a stop they give up a big big first down. There's the bloodied elbow but more importantly for Dallas Ware is still down on the turf injury timeout. The good news he got up trotted off the field he has to come out for at least to play go back to the end of the play Garcia picks up the first down. You'll see right there his left leg when it went across he leg whipped his own guy Chris Canty. But he's ready to come back in, but not for this play at the 18 yard line on first down. To the outside goes Westbrook, and he gets taken down at the 12 yard line. He followed Thomas to pay the fullback, and he picks up six yards to make it second and four. Back comes Ware. You know, they still haven't thrown to the fullback, and, you know, we talked to Andy Reid about that last night because the, the Cowboys have had so much trouble down in this area covering the fullback, and and he says yeah he said we're going to have to give it a try and see if they have it covered and they they haven't been in that situation yet to try it and maybe they're the situation they're in now they don't need it. He lines up as the fullback meanwhile very quietly typical of his style Westbrook has rushed for 100 yards maybe some more definitely some more first down to the four just another reason a guy like that doesn't go to the Pro Bowl because you talk about him but there's always somebody else. Whether it's a guy who's been in the league for a while, might be Ladanian Tomlinson, Frank Gore these days. In the meantime, all this guy has done tonight is run for 107 yards. Yeah, watch that John Runyon there, the right tackle, Sean Andrews, the right guard. This is this is when if you're an offensive lineman, this is when you love to play. You know, I mean, you got them where you want them. You know, you've beaten them down. That defense has been out there, you know, all the time, and and you, you can run the ball. And darn near just have your way with him. First and goal, halfway through the period. Garcia, tight roll to the right, throws, caught. Out of bounds goes Reggie Brown inside the one yard line. Second down and goal. Yeah, but don't you feel that, you know, again, that, that this offense, and a lot like the New Orleans game, has just kept that Cowboy defense back in their heels. I mean, Andy Reid has done everything with personnel. I mean, he's had. Wide receivers and slots, tight ends out, you know, Westbrook in, Buck Halter, you know, both the guys. And it's just, you know, his play calling and his personnel moves and changes has really just kept this Cowboy defense off balance all day. Has to be a lot of concern about that Cowboy defense at this point. Buck Halter is the running back, and he will take it in for the touchdown. Correll Buck Halter. That's an 80 yard drive. After the Dawkins interception in the end zone. And that's just a big offensive line controlling the line of scrimmage. You know, we 
talked about this early in the first quarter and the second quarter and you can just see as the quarters went on this offensive line just dominated more and more until this fourth quarter it's just been complete domination. 188 rushing yards David Akers to the point after. The only good news for Dallas at least for them it's still a two possession game but the way they're going they need a lot more than 654 Philly dominant up by 16. You I got I got two things. I got I want the Cowboys to beat the Eagles and I want a BB gun. Beautiful. <laughs> Drew Esikoff, our director, Fred Gadelli, our producer. Miles Austin, a yard into the end zone. And Hank Basket will make the initial hit at the 26 yard line. Take a look at this. The last three games. At Washington they won by two they beat the Giants last week they're leading here when that schedule came out at the beginning of the year everybody thought oh boy look at that and that's when people thought you know Washington was going to be good and the Giants were going to be the way they played at the beginning of the year and everybody figured if Philadelphia is to be in the race they better build up some kind of a cushion instead they got back into the race by going through their three opponents on the road. All right. Here's Romo on a roll throwing picked off and that time it's Lito Shepard with the interception at the 46 yard line. You know and Bill Parcells realizes this you know when you know when he's saying don't anoint him don't do this that you know we watch a few games and think a guy is there and like I always say you know playing quarterback in the NFL is tough and you get a guy playing his, his first year no matter how long he's been there. He's going to have some bumps in the road. And today is another bumpy road for Tony Romo. Off road racing today. Picked by Shepard. Tomorrow morning on the Today Show, the inspirational story of a father and son in a lifelong race that proves anything is possible. Real heroes starting tomorrow, right here on NBC on the Today Show. Well, Six interceptions in his last six games against Dallas for Lito Shepard, including the one that sealed the win back on October 8th. And I feel they can use the clock with a 16 point lead, and Westbrook will take the ball to the 50 yard line. And, you know, John, you look at this Philadelphia season, this is now becoming an amazing story. They were 4 and 1 to start the year, but they lost that killer to the Giants in overtime the second week. They get beaten at the end of the game against New Orleans on a on a last second field goal. Matt Bryant beats him with a 62 yard field goal at Tampa. They lose McNabb. They lose in Indianapolis. They're five and six. And now look at where they are. You know, and I think you have to give a lot of credit to good coaching. And I'm not just talking about Andy Reid either. I'm talking about you know his assistants, uh, Juan Castillo, his line coach, you know Jim Johnson, the defensive coordinator, Marty Morningway. I mean all those guys you know help keeping this thing going keeping it together and you know steadying the ship. Hatcher makes the tackle that time after Garcia picks up two. Marty Morningwig calling the plays. Doesn't it look like he has a smaller card than Andy. I think Marty may have <laughs> fewer plays on his card than Andy has. Either that or better eyesight. They both have that thing where they put the card in front of their mouth so that. No one can lip read. Third down and four. Andy's card is not only bigger, but Andy has more of them. Subterfuge. And that is dropped out in the flat that time by the fullback, Thomas Tepay. Well, so. they finally they finally tried that play. I mean, that was the, the thing that had killed Dallas that Dallas hadn't covered in two weeks is the just the fullback out in the flat. Andy Reid says well, we're going to try it. We're going to check them to see if they got that covered now. And he waited until this point here to check them. Philly to punt. Dirk Johnson to send it down Terrence Newman's way. 
Isn't this a way to get the crowd out of a game though? Well, half the crowd's gone yeah, anyway. I, that's what I mean. They go home. Yeah. Not only get them out of the game, get them out of the stadium. Right in the parking lot. And that'll be down at the five yard line. Getting down there was Vasilio Hansen. So Romo in crunch time in a two possession game starts from the five yard line. Tony Romo, his numbers on the night two interceptions that one touchdown pass which was caught by Terrell Owens which made the score at that point 10 to 7 but Jeff Garcia has been methodical and efficient and Brian Westbrook meanwhile has run for 111 yards five yards per rush Philadelphia has had a good running game in Dallas his running game has been well not want to say non-existent but very mediocre. You know, and the other thing, and, and it didn't it didn't affect you know their game or their team. But I hate these uniforms. <laughs> I mean, these blue jerseys and white hats. This isn't the Dallas Cowboys. No, you're right. And they're not playing like the Cowboys. But I'm not saying it's because of the uniform. But this team doesn't look like a Dallas Cowboy team. You're right. I don't want to say they look like the Tennessee Titans in those uniforms, but they do. No, or, or the you know the JVs. I mean, you know, they got the you know the white <laughs> helmet. I mean, they got you know the whole thing going and. It would probably sell some jerseys, but uh, yeah, this is the second time they've worn them. You know, they yeah. they wore them on Thanksgiving and and Christmas. So they worked on Thanksgiving. Beat Tampa. Yeah, but they still don't look like the Cowboys. I mean, look no, at them right. breaking. This doesn't right. look like the Dallas no. Cowboys. No, no. And then when they play lousy like this, then it really <laughs> doesn't look like the Dallas Cowboys. Right. I think you're just talking about wearing these uniforms forever. Second and ten. Romo to the outside. Witten and the tight end will step out of bounds at the 12 yard line with four minutes and 39 seconds remaining. We were talking to Andy Reid yesterday about you know you're flying back from Indianapolis. You're five and six. McNabb has surgery. You know what do you say. What do you do. He said you know what after that game he said I just I told the team the next day. We need to step it up a notch. The players and the coaches. We were playing and coaching cautious football the way he put it. That's what he said. He said we played too cautious and and we coached too cautious. And that's what I like about Andy Reid. You know, it's not well they did this or they fouled up. Is you know, they we did. You know, the coaches. I coach lousy. On third and three, Romo will get the first down. He'll slide to a stop up at the 25-yard line. I'll tell you, he didn't come out and coach coach cautiously today. I mean, he he came out and opened this thing up, and of course, the you know the plan that they had really worked. Like I said, it wasn't only you know Jeff Garcia, but the the substitutions, the formations, everything that they did to the Cowboys kind of fouled them up. First and ten, Romo working without a huddle, and that pass is thrown out of bounds, intended for Terry Glenn. And again, you know, in a game like this, Philadelphia has been dominant, so there really wasn't like a seminal moment or a pivotal moment. But you got to go back to that goal line stand by Philadelphia early in the game after the long Philadelphia march, and then you know with Barber in the backfield, and you have four shots from the seven-yard line, and they couldn't get in. Big. Right, and you know, and I think you have to give credit to this defense too. I mean, they've been much uh, maligned, you know, not being able to stop the run and all those things. And and this this front seven, this you know, you know, the defensive line and the linebackers have played very well. The Cowboys haven't been able to run. Second and ten, Romo over the middle. That's caught. He goes to the tight end, Witten. He's up to the 31-yard line, but that clock keeps tick tick ticking. Under four minutes. And again, they're going to have to convert, but clearly you're in four down territory right now at this point in the game, down by 16. And now the Eagles are just in a, you can just see a three man rush there. They're just going to rush three and drop eight and make, and make Tony Romo throw into coverage. Third and three, he's going to run again, so he packs it in. He's out past the 40, slides to a stop, tackled by Mickle, uh, Quentin Michael at the 46 yard line. Brad wanted a flag for a late hit and don't get one. He's calling the play right there at the line of scrimmage. Obviously, no huddle. And the Eagles are rushing four on this one. And that's a drop by Owens. 
Well it's an unofficial stat but our guys at the Elias Sports Bureau do a pretty good job of figuring out what's really a drop and what's a fake drop but that's 14 drops now for Owens this season and that uh, leads the league in that dubious category. Well you know he had the broken hand and the hand surgery and then he had the torn tendon in the finger but Terrell Owens I'll say this has always dropped passes. I mean all the way back to when he had a good hand and good finger because he's always been thinking of you know run after the catch and you know what he's going to do after he catches the ball. Second and ten. And that's incomplete and John the, the question is now begin to is whoever's left continues that chorus of booing Bill Parcells his future Terrell Owens his future and I he, say one one will be back and one won't he's back he's right. back and the other one won't mm -hmm. yeah. agreed I would, I would I would think that you know I think this whole Tony Romo thing uh, you know and again and you know he's having a tough day today but I think that kind of rejuvenated Bill Parcells and I think in his mind he's committed to next year. And I don't believe that Terrell Owens will be part of the Cowboys next year. Parcells signed a four year deal but it was extended a year so he has one more year next year on the deal. Romo throws and the pass is low and incomplete. And that will make it fourth down and ten and pretty much the last gas for the Cowboys even though the clock will stop four more times because they have three timeouts plus the two minute warning. You know one of the things that that uh, mm -hmm. ooh, that, that could yeah. have been a penalty right there on Bunkley because you can't you know hit the quarterback sure. in the head and you know that's obviously what he did but you know Bill Parcells was saying that Jim Johnson his defense tries to you know disrupt your offense and I was saying that you know, he's been pretty successful at doing that today. I mean, I, I really feel that Jim Johnson right there and his his defense has really disrupted this Cowboy offense. Fourth and ten, and Romo's going to get sacked, so they can't even get it away. And that's Roderick Hood coming on a corner blitz. Well, you know, you know, third down, fourth down, and you know, Jim Johnson has one more. You know, you look. Okay, you got anything else on the list? And yeah, yeah. How about? Just bring in the corner, line him up there in the wide receiver, and bring him in a blitz. And that's that's the thing they always say about Jim Johnson. He'll start blitzing you right when they get off the bus, and he'll keep blitzing you to the end. And he's doing that today. First career sack for Roderick Hood. Look at the pressure on Tony Romo today. He's been sacked three times, knocked down four times. Hit three times. Bill Parcells is telling you know when a guy is really down, Bill Parcells tries to lift him up. You know, and he's telling him, okay, you know, you're going to have these days, but you know, we're still playing. You know, it, it's it's you know how you how you come back from this is what we have to talk about. Westbrook takes it to the 34-yard line. Again, Dallas is in the playoffs. The, the Cowboys will go to the playoffs since Parcells' first season, which was 0-3. They went to Carolina lost a wild card game but now they still have a chance to win the division. The only way they could do that of course would be if Philly loses to Atlanta and then Dallas beats Detroit here but they have not won the division since Chan Gailey was the head coach in 98. You know, I really like the way the Eagles are playing now and, and not just today in this game but the way they've played the last few weeks and I don't know that they're going to go about losing to Atlanta in this league. I don't count on anything anymore. No, no, I don't either. I don't either. But there are some guys that are really playing well at the end yep. of the year at this time of the season, and I think this is one of those teams. No question. Dominant tonight. Two minute warning. 23-7, Philadelphia. It will be the final game of the NFL season. We don't know what it will be yet, but on NBC next Sunday night at eight o'clock Eastern time, we will have a game for you. And of course, there's so much going on and. So much depending on the game that follows this one Miami and the Jets as well but in terms of the NFC it's become a little clearer tonight as you look at Garcia's numbers because uh, Philadelphia with a win would cement a buy for New Orleans so Chicago and New Orleans will both host playoff games the weekend of January 13th. So when someone says hey watch where you're going you don't know where you're going right. they're right huh. <laughs> That's right. You don't know where they're going <laughs> north. Uh, that's always tough, East. especially when you travel on bus. You know, right. well, just well to get out of here tonight. <laughs> well, where are you going? 
Oh, that anywhere that on the highway. One ninety-eight. Eagles tonight, and that's the most by an opponent in Dallas since the game in which Terrell Owens was dancing on the star and was whacked by George T. That's how long ago that was. Yeah, and that's that's all about you know it's about good running, but it's about domination in that offensive line. Where are they big and strong and good? Westbrook will take the ball to the 29 yard line and that will put them up and over the 200 yard mark in rushing. Meanwhile with Garcia I mean all of a sudden he's well, he's 36 years old. McNabb just had surgery Donovan they hope is ready to play next year and then what do you do if you fill it well if you Philadelphia of course you want to bring him back but if you're Garcia what do you what do you think you know if you, if you if, especially if this team goes deep into the playoffs do you say I want to start somewhere. No I think you say I want to come back. I mean you know he made that decision before you know where I'm going someplace where I can start. He went to Cleveland look what happened there. He went to Detroit look what happened there and then he decided look I want to go to a good team. I want to go to a team that has a chance to win and has a chance to be in the Super Bowl and I think I think he's the right guy in the right place and I would guess he's going to stay there. He told us last night he, he told his agent just to focus on the present. Plenty of time to think about the future. So the NFC playoff picture with Philadelphia winning this game Chicago at home num they're number one. New Orleans is number two they get a buy Philly at the moment leading in the East Seattle would be the four seed. So it's conceivable Dallas and Philly could see each other again in the playoffs right now Dallas is still in the playoffs the Giants at the own that sixth spot amazingly enough I don't know how they can own anything uh, the way they're playing well they mathematically that's how yeah, crazy it is the, there's other four teams still in contention the Giants will play Washington next week on Saturday night on fourth and three and this will officially wrap it up as Brian Westbrook will pick up the first down and that will run us all the way down to triple zeros and for Brian Westbrook tonight that's one hundred twenty two yards and Bill has just watched his team which a lot of people felt two and a half weeks ago was the best in the NFC at that moment just lose two out of three and look pretty bad tonight and they look pretty bad but you know I think we have to give credit to the Philadelphia Eagles for making them look bad. Just to amend one thing here we looked at it a little closer in terms of Dallas meeting Philadelphia that cannot exist because three has to play six four plays five just trust me here well, that can't happen but Seattle could wind up playing Philadelphia or Dallas big big win for the Eagles. And Jeff Garcia. The toast of Philadelphia. They have won four straight. They dominate tonight. They win the game by a score of 23 to 7. And right now they are the leaders in the NFC East. Coming up next, our post-game show, our rock star of the game interviews and highlights.